So the aims of today's session is to describe child sexual exploitation so that you have a clear understanding of what's meant by the term. Um, you'll be able to determine the types of activities that are involved in this, it's a hideous crime, uh, and to understand the links to organised crime uh, through this. I'm going to demonstrate the links with child exploitation with other aspects of the unit that you've studied, uh, particularly human trafficking, and we'll also talk about changes in, in organised crime. Now, because of the links to organised crime and because organised crime is mentioned throughout the presentation today, it's probably useful for you to have an understanding of what uh, organised crime is and what organised crime groups are. Um, and you'll find that um, in the United Nations uh, Office of Drugs Control Program where they talk about uh, organised crime and give a definition that's accepted uh, fairly widely across Australia and, uh, and international. All right, so there's many different types of uh, sexual encounters uh, that people have. Uh, adults, obviously, in person and uh, generally consensual, but there are obviously examples uh, of times when, uh, when those sexual encounters aren't. Um, online, through uh, cyber sex, through chat rooms, through instant messaging, uh, role playing games. These are all legal um, for the most part, and they're not areas that law enforcement and policing generally is concerned about, particularly because they are consensual. But in terms of illegal sexual activity, those that are of interest to, uh, to policing and the law enforcement, uh, and those which they actively pursue through various investigative techniques include child exploitation and grooming. And grooming is where an adult uh, has made online contact with a child under age, under the age of 16, with the intention of facilitating a sexual relationship. You will note from the graphic on the side of the, uh, the screen that the AFP, through its child protection operations, does a lot of work with partner agencies in the law enforcement field, uh, including at both the Commonwealth and state and territory levels and with partner agencies internationally, um, <clears throat> through Interpol and through Europol, as well as bilaterally with other agencies to investigate and disrupt or bring to justice those who perpetrate these crimes. Much of the information we've referred to through the presentation today, um, you'll find there's uh, acknowledging particular sources, and I'd encourage you to go to some of those sources uh, and have a look at the material that's there. So, crimes against children. They tend to be local. Uh, and, and you'll note from uh, a recent Royal Commission that was announced uh, by the Federal Government and, uh, and relevant state is already underway is a demonstration of the nature of one aspect of the uh, problem in Australia. Make no mistake though, the problem is global, so there's an international dimension. Not simply because the acts, of child, uh, acts against children occur in many countries and in a number of cultures, but because the internet has made it simpler to distribute and access child abuse material more easily and for online predators to come into direct contact with children. Online habits, access to chat rooms, those issues we spoke about in the previous slide actually facilitate child abuse where they're used for that purpose. Social media in the ungoverned space that is the internet makes policing this activity extremely difficult. But make no mistake, there have been many successful disruptions and prosecutions arising from proactive police work in this space, including some fairly high-profile uh, cases recently in Australia and overseas, which have received significant media attention. Another aspect that we need to talk about is travelling sex offenders or sex tourism. And this is more prevalent <coughs> in developing countries, um, and it relies in some cases or to some degree on the wealth of the offenders and the ability to travel to those places, to those less developed countries uh, where they can access children for, uh, for sex. Um, it's linked to child trafficking, it's linked also to organised crime and even to murder. There's a range of crimes that exist around this space.
policing law enforcement agencies have a role, as does uh, as do organisations like Interpol, has a huge challenge for policing worldwide and trying to um, investigate and disrupt this type of activity. It requires specialised skills um, and increased resources. It also requires a specific mental toughness on the part of the investigators that investigate these crimes and the intelligence officers who are responsible for building you know, the intelligence profiles and the intelligence picture around uh, these predators. In the AFP in particular, we, uh, we rely or we require any of our people, investigators or intelligence officers going into child protection operations to work to undergo psychological testing to ensure that they're of, uh, you know, that we're not going to put them into a, uh, a difficult position uh, in terms of their ability to cope with that sort of work. It's particularly uh, traumatic for a number of people. You can imagine mothers and fathers working in, uh, in investigations in these types of fields and the images that they would have to, to look at and view daily in terms of gathering evidence uh, to prosecute people who are committing crimes in this area. Very, very traumatic, uh, very difficult area to work. So uh, we have psychological testing for them before they go in and screening people out. Uh, I, know, uh, I won't hide that fact that we do screen people out from working in that area. It's a difficult place to work. We also debrief them after they've finished working in that area before we deploy them to other areas so that we can uh, help them to, uh, to manage effectively um, the, the images and the work that they have had to do. <clears throat> so there's a lot of work that goes into that. It's not just in a field that anybody can, uh, can investigate in or, or conduct intelligence work in. Um, Interpol is an international law enforcement cooperative um, with resources and networks to uh, <coughs> me, to fight global aspects of this crime uh, more effectively. Interpol provides logistical support, coordination and assistance for international operations. It also offers specific training sessions, uh, briefings, analysis, technical advice to participating agencies. I just mentioned here that the AFP is the, uh, the host agency in Australia for Interpol activities here. So what is child sexual exploitation? It's the possession, the manufacture and distribution of child sexual material the enticement of children for sexual acts, child prostitution, child sex tourism, and child sexual molestation. Online child exploitation is, is, is exactly as it sounds. It's the sexual exploitation of children where an internet component's involved. Child pornography is defined very well uh, through the US federal law uh, that's noted here. Uh, the definition of child pornography is any visual depiction, including any photograph, film, video, picture, or computer or computer generated image or picture, whether made or produced by electronic, mechanical, or other means of sexually explicit conduct where the production of visual depictions involves the use of a minor engaging in sexually explicit conduct. Visual depiction is an, pardon me, a digital image, computer image or computer generated image that is or is indistinguishable from that of a minor engaging in sexually explicit activity. And the visual depiction has been created, adapted or modified or appears that an identifiable minor is engaging in that sort of conduct. The US federal law also criminalises knowingly conducting or producing or distributing, receiving or possession with intent to distribute a visual depiction of any kind, including a drawing, cartoon, sculpture or painting that depicts a minor engaging in, in sexually explicit conduct and is obscene and depicts an image that is or appears to be of a minor engaging in graphic bestiality, sadistic or masochistic abuse, or sexual intercourse, including genital to genital, oral to genital, anal to genital, or oral anal, 
whether between persons of the same or opposite sex, and such depiction lacks serious literacy, artistic, political, or scientific value. So that's a fairly comprehensive um, definition of what we're talking about in this space, isn't it? There's not too much that um, that's left to chance or that, um, that is left to the imagination in this field. So what is child abuse material? It includes a sexual image of a child uh, where abuse or exploitation, but it should never be described as pornography because pornography is a term generally used for adults engaging in consensual, consensual sexual acts distributed mostly legally um, to the general public for sexual pleasure. Child abuse images are documented evidence of a crime in progress. There's a very um, stark distinction there. A child being sexually abused is child abuse material. 